Canyon Lake. Welcome to worship. I am Pastor Brett. I'm the teaching pastor here, and I'm super excited uh, to be with you today as we get to explore how God is still speaking in our midst. And so as we join our hearts and our minds in worship uh, today, may, may we come expecting the Spirit to do something new within us. Uh, to be present with us and to speak God's word and God's life and love anew in us. May we come today with open hearts, ready to learn, ready to receive, and, and ready to worship. Friends, let's go ahead and, and begin our time of worship singing this song together. Please join me at home in singing Be Thou My Vision. Hey, thanks so much for that amazing music. Uh, Y'all, let's continue worshiping together as we pray this prayer with one another. Oh God, who is ever speaking, renew in us a passion to know you intimately. Instill in us an eagerness to know your word that is alive in our midst, guiding us in the ways of life. Remind us this day where true life and love is found in knowing you and living out your will. Amen. And let's send it over to Miss Erin for today's kids time. Good morning, Canyon Lake. It's Erin Woods, your children's ministry coordinator. And today I've decided that I'm going to study the Bible. Okay, so I brought all my supplies. I brought my pen and my highlighter and my glasses and I'm all ready. Do you think I'm ready? Do you ever wonder why there's so many Bibles? The Bible wasn't written in English for us to understand, so they had to translate into our language. So this one's called the Common English Bible. This is a great Bible for your third grade Bible because it uses words that we're used to hearing. But a common Bible that we use for our sermons is the New Revised Standard Version. That's the Bibles that Pastor Brett and Pastor Dan mostly use. But does it really matter? No. Sometimes it's really fun to look up the same verse in both Bibles and see that they're different. You might understand one more than the other. Did you know that the Bible isn't just one book? It's true. The Bible is actually 66 books all put into one book. I suppose they decided that would be a good idea so that you didn't have to walk around with 66 books. And then you could just grab one, right? The Bible is separated into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is everything that happened before Jesus, and the New Testament is the events that happened after. So there's 66 books in the Bible. And those of you who have been to elementary school, you've probably talked about how that there's different genres of books. There is fiction, which means fake, and there's nonfiction, which is real. What do you think the Bible is? Do you think it's nonfiction? Do you think it's real? Hmm, interesting. 
do you, what kind of genre of this book do you think it is? Is it a poetry book? Is it a song book? Is it a science book or a history book? Huh, that's a really hard question. Because there's so many books in this Bible, there are lots of different types of books in the Bible. But really, it's not any of those one things. It's more like it all squished together. There's some poetry and there's some songs. There's a little bit of history. There's a little bit of fiction. And there's a little bit of nonfiction. The thing about the Bible is that the Bible is made for us to think and to learn about God and then to take that into our lives and help us make it better. So I just kind of want to end in saying that it doesn't necessarily matter which one of these books that you pick up and decide to read. It more matters that you spend some time in the Word, that you spend some time reading it, maybe with your mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, whoever you live with, so taking that time to spend some time in that, thinking about it, and then if you need help, know that we are here to help you read that and to kind of think about all of those things with you. Okay? I hope to see you soon. I hope you're having a great summer. Bye! Friends, as we come to this time of prayer, I want to remind you that we are always praying over you. Um, but if there is a specific thing that you would like us to, to be praying about or, or for, please send us a message, leave it in a comment, call the church office, get a hold of us because we believe that prayer matters and we want to be praying for you in all the ways that we can. And now, friends, as we turn into this time of prayer, I want to invite you to, to center yourself, to still yourself before God, and let's sing this song together. I'm finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is It's okay The last thing I need Is to be heard But to hear What you would say The word of God speak When you pour down like Washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and all you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. I'm finding my in the midst of you Beyond the music Beyond the noise and All that I need Is to still be with you And in the quiet I hear your voice The word of God speak Pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Oh, please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. You pour down like rain. Finding myself at a loss for words, and the funny thing is, it's so.
Will you pray with me? Holy and good God, this day we pray that, that your word and your spirit might rain down upon us. God, we invite you into this place that you might be the one to, to teach us, to speak into us what it means to live our lives according to your will. God, we need you. We need you to show us the ways that, that we are moving in the right direction and we need you to reorient our steps when we've gone astray. And so God, today our, our hearts hearts are turned to you, they're, they're open to you and we pray that you might be here with us, guiding us. God, we pray for those who who can't be here today, who don't even know what they are, are, are missing when it comes to life with you. And God, we pray that you would stir their spirits as well. That they might know the love of, of a good God who cares for them and who wants life for them. And God, we pray for those in our midst who, who are struggling with grief, with addiction, with, with hurt and pain. And God, we pray that you might wrap your arms around them. And God, we pray that you might show us how we might best wrap our arms around them too. God, we come to you today in worship, praising you for all the gifts that you've already given us and the gifts that you'll continue to breathe into our lives. And, and God, we pray that it all begins in this time in this space right now, that we might become even more like the one, your son, who taught us how to love and live and to pray saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, Y'all, we're in the second week of this new teaching series called Foundations, and we're looking at some of those uh, building blocks of what makes our United Methodist faith our faith. Uh, and this week, we're talking about something that I think is really important, which is our relationship with the Bible. And I want to warn you ahead of time that today you're getting the real teaching pastor part of me. But this is something that I care a whole lot about and that I hope you care about too. And so we're just going to jump right in to the scripture that we're looking at today. It comes from Psalm uh, chapter 119 verses 169 through 176. Let's hear these words. Oh Lord, listen to my cry. Give me the discerning mind you promised. Listen to my prayer. Rescue me as you promised. Let praise flow from my lips, for you have taught me your decrees. Let my tongue sing about your word, for all your commands are right. Give me a helping hand, for I have chosen to follow your commandments. O oh Lord, I have longed for your rescue, and your instructions are my delight. Let me live so I can praise you, and may your regulations help me. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me for I have not forgotten your commands. This short segment that we've just read, it comes from the longest chapter of the Bible. It's actually 176 verses long, and, and unlike most of our scripture, it's not narrative-based. Throughout this entire thing, there's not a single story in it. It's literally just 176 scriptures of the psalmist talking about about how much they love God's law and asking for God's help in following it. This particular psalm, I think, is rich in a whole host of ways. And I could honestly nerd out on you about it for like an hour. Um, but what I love most and what I think matters most to us today is the way that it can reorient how we approach scripture if we let it. One of the ideas that's repeated consistently throughout this psalm is, is that of delighting in God's teaching, in God's word. The psalmist suggests that knowing and studying and abiding by God's word is, is something to utterly delight in. And it makes me wonder, 
<laughs> it makes me wonder how many of us just absolutely find delight and joy in studying the Bible. For some of us, it's definitely a place of, of hope and reassurance and maybe some joy. And for others, it's just not so much, right? Maybe we've been abused by people misusing scripture or, or we don't understand how it actually still matters for our lives. Maybe we, we don't quite know how to make sense of it all. Or, or perhaps we're even a bit skeptical of scripture and all that people have claimed it to be. But no matter where you're at today, today's message is important because we're going to explore how we can reclaim the role of scripture in our lives in a way that can lead to, to meaning, to transformation, and to deep faithfulness. So as, as Christians, scripture really is one of our foundations to our faith. And we sometimes just sort of gloss over it because it's so familiar to us, right? We treat it like it's simple. It's simple in that we all know we should read it, uh, that we can always count on it being present in worship. It's simple in that we know a lot of the stories, we've memorized some of the verses, and we feel familiar with it. But it's also actually really complicated. It's complicated in that there are parts of scripture that seem to to directly conflict with other portions. Some parts seem completely out of touch with the life that we know today. And the parts of life that we desperately want guidance on sometimes don't seem to show up in scripture at all. It's a good and faithful thing to know that scripture is essential to our faith, that in it contains all that we need to know for life with Christ and to be able to name that sometimes it and our relationship with it is complicated. But it's still relevant to our lives, friends. Even amidst the complications, scripture is still relevant to our lives. But to get to the point where we can see it, we've got to have a firm grounding in what it isn't, what it is, and, and why it even matters. And so today I, I want to go through some of these things. And first, Scripture, the Bible, it isn't a, a history or a science textbook. Its purpose isn't to provide us with the answer to the question, how? A, a lot of times we get ourselves into trouble and begin to question the validity of Scripture when, when we start to learn that it's not all factually accurate. Like when science or history comes out that, that isn't in line with what's written in, in scripture, we can be forced into one of two camps. Either the camp that, that discredits the scholars in our midst or, or, or the camp that, that questions whether the Bible can even be trusted. But as United Methodists, y'all, we have the freedom. We've got the freedom and the calling to live outside of that binary. Our faith necessitates taking credible scholars seriously while also not walking away from our holy text. And, and I think the only way that we can do that is if we begin to shift the question we ask scripture to answer for us. Instead of how, what if the question that, that we ask are, are who and why? Right? As an example, Genesis doesn't offer us a scientifically sound explanation for how the world and all of its inhabitants were created. It wasn't meant to, but it does offer us spiritual truth. The, the scripture was meant to tell us, and it does tell us who created us and why. You and I, we were created by and out of the love of a good God. We were made in God's image for the purpose of, of relationship with each other and with God. We were made to worship, to revel in God's love all the days of our lives. We were made for a life with and a life like Jesus Christ. Scripture doesn't tell us exactly and scientifically how that happened, but it tells us why and who did it. And when we begin to look to the Bible through those lenses, 
Not only will it make more sense of our real lived experiences, but it'll also deeply enrich our faith and our whole lives. Because the truth is that, that the how question, it's good and valuable work, but what matters most for our faith is that we know who God is and why we were made. That's what scripture does for us that, that our textbooks can't do. That's why our psalm today says, says, let me live so I can praise you. And may your regulations, your word help me. The why is living to praise God and scripture tells us who we're praising, why we're praising, and then helps us figure out how to live into it. Scripture tells us why and who. Which leads us to the second thing that, that scripture is not. Scripture is not all meant to be read literally. Just like any other book that we might pick up, there are different genres of literature contained within the Bible. There are letters, books of poetry, wisdom, prophecy, narratives, and each of them come with their own style and purpose. They each come with their own way of being read. In the same way that, that we do a disservice, but by picking up a nonfiction book and reading it as if it were a novel, we do a disservice to scripture if we pick it up and expect for it all to be read in the exact same way. I think of the Song of Solomon as an example. It's this, it's this book in the Old Testament. It's a book of beautiful, beautiful poetry. And now we know that poetry is made up of metaphors and similes and allegories, and, and poetry just doesn't make sense when we try to read it literally. So to be really faithful and serious with our, with our reading and our studying of scripture, I don't think we can read it literally either, or, or at least not all of it. We can't read it all in the exact same way. It's not, it's not meant for that, but, but scripture is meant to be read contextually. And I mean a few things by that. I, ideally, each time we go to read scripture, we'll know what kind of literature we're reading. You know, whether it's a poem or a letter. And then eventually we'll grow to know the social and historical context in, in, in which that piece of scripture was written. And then we'll consider the, the context of the passage that we're reading within the entire story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And now this can feel really overwhelming. Especially when we're like, listen, dude, I'm just going to read the Bible for a little bit of hope right here, you know? And the truth is that sometimes, y'all, sometimes it's okay to go find that one verse that gives you the hope and the strength that you need to carry on with your day. I'm never going to condemn that. But, but when we're really studying the Bible, all of these, these layers of context matter. It's why the psalmist today said, Oh Lord, listen to my cry. Give me the discerning mind you promised. God's promised us a discerning mind and God wants us to use it to truly make sense of the scriptures and, and what they mean for us today. You know, I think the easiest way to, to navigate this is to simply go get yourself a study Bible. And if you don't have one of those, come talk to me. Send me an email. Send us a message on Facebook. Come talk to me and I'll help you get a good one. Because not only do they offer the scripture, but they also tell us some of this crucial context information. And we need it to study scripture and for it to be as meaningful and as relevant to our lives as possible. We've got to first know how to read it within its context, because it can give us a clearer and fuller picture of, of what it really meant to the original uh, writers and hearers, and also what it really means to us and, and to our daily walk as Jesus followers. And finally, y'all, scripture is not meant to only be studied alone. You and I, we, we carry our own biases, beliefs, and expectations with us everywhere we go even when we go to read the Bible. And what can happen if we spend all of our time studying without inviting others or the, the Spirit in? What can happen is the scriptures begin to simply confirm what we already believe 
rather than actually transforming us. The scriptures can begin to only confirm what we already believe rather than transforming us into Christ likeness. And so scripture is meant to be read within a community and with the guidance of the Spirit. When we let others in, and especially when we invite God's Spirit to work within us and guide us as we study scripture, amazing things can happen, y'all. We get to know who Jesus is in a way that we would simply never have come to know on our own. We can be held accountable to faithfully living out our why that, that the word of God reveals to us. Through others in the spirit, we can begin to rejuvenate our faith and to find even more meaning in these stories of old. This is why the entire psalm today all 176 verses are centered around the psalmist asking for God's help in knowing God's word. Because y'all, we need help for the Bible to truly translate to our lives in ways that are meaningful, faithful, and transformative. We need help. We need each other. And most of all, we need the spirit. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Pastor Brett, we started today talking about delighting and finding joy in studying God's word, and literally none of this stuff you shared makes it sound any more delightful. It just sounds like more work, right? And believe me, I hear you. I hear you. But I also dare you to put it into practice. I dare you to start asking the, the Bible who and why. I dare you, every time you pick up your Bible, I dare you to dig just a bit deeper into the context of what you're reading. I dare you to begin actively inviting the Spirit to help you and guide your study. I dare you to join a Bible study with other Canyon Lakers. I dare you. Because when you implement some of these tools in studying God's Word, I promise you you'll find Jesus in holy and holy new ways. And that, my friends, is something to delight in. It is utterly delightful to rest in a more complete picture of, of who Jesus is in the way he's calling us to be. It is utterly delightful to know who we are and why we were made. It's utterly delightful to invite the Spirit into our lives alongside others so that we might be transformed over and over again, more fully into the people of God. Y'all, there's so much freedom. There's so much freedom in coming to know the, the word of God in a newer and deeper way. That the Bible and our ability to truly study it, it, it requires work and, and reorienting ourselves over and over again, but it is a gift, y'all. It's a gift to us because it has the power to completely uproot our lives and ground us in life with the parent, with Jesus, with the spirit, and with each other. And in that kind of new life, my friends, may we truly delight and find our joy. Amen.
we come now to this time of of giving and announcements. And if you've got a financial gift you'd like to give Canyon Lake, you can do that in a lot of ways. Um, you can go to our website. It's probably the easiest way, clumc.com. You can mail us a check at 3500 Canyon Lake Drive, Rapid City, South Dakota, 57702. Or you can bring it by the office if you live here in Rapid City. And, and the other way that we can give back to God is with our whole lives. It is with living, spirit-filled, and spirit-led lives. And so if you would like uh, to know, you know, what's the next step that you can take in living that out? Or maybe you've got an idea, but you're just not quite sure how to make it happen. Come talk to me. Send me an email, brett.rose, R-O-E-S, at clumc.com. Send us a message on Facebook. Uh, just get a hold of me because I want to help make sure that, that, that you are living uh, the life that you feel God calling you to live. And so I want to help you make that happen. Um, and then finally, friends, we've got a couple of announcements today. Um, and, and the first is around missions. Our new missions project is Many Hands. And, and for those of you who have been around Canyon Lake for a while, that's going to sound familiar. Um, but we, we do it every year, but it's going to look a little bit differently this year. So this week we are raising funds and supplies um, for hygiene kits that help us serve some of our unhoused neighbors. Um, in the coming weeks, and, and next week we'll be we'll be uh, raising that as well. Um, and then in the next few weeks, we'll be switching up. You know whether it's going to be firefighter kits or school kits. Um, so just stay tuned for that information. And then instead of having one massive uh, packing event where we pack all of our uh, kits that we make, we are actually going to be doing it in a brand new way. And so I want you to stay tuned for how we're going to help that. We want to see even more hands involved in this process. And so be paying attention. Uh, your Canyon Lake Cares leader will, will be reaching out about uh, some possibilities and how you might get involved in that. Um, and if you don't have a, a Canyon Lake Cares group, if you're newer here and you're, you don't even know what that is, again, reach out to me. We want to help you get plugged in. Um, and, and so as I'm really excited for the ways that we're doing many hands this year. And I think we've got the, the chance to truly make a huge difference uh, in our community and in our world. And so I hope that you'll come along with us during the process. Now, the other announcement is that, as you know, Vacation Bible School is coming up very quickly. And so I'm going to send it over to Miss Erin uh, to tell us a little bit more uh, about what she needs and what the game plan is. Hey, Candy Lake, I just wanted to remind you that in two weeks, we start Vacation Bible School, our super epic, awesome adventure that we have each summer. And there's some important things that I want you to remember. First of all, please share out the Facebook event on Facebook. Consider inviting your friends and neighbors because this is a wonderful way to invite them to share in God's love, for them to get to know you better and God better, and for us just to have an awesome, fun week. If you sign up in any way to volunteer, I would love for you to attend one of our training sessions. Those will be Thursday, July 15th at 10.30 in the morning or at 6.30 at night. And then we will have a decorating night on that Friday, the 16th. That will start at 6. I will have pizza and we will transform our church into a beautiful, almost Seuss-looking island with lighthouses and all kinds of fun things. If you were off during the week and you'd love to organize, I'm having at least two prep days next week, Monday the 12th and Tuesday the 13th. We're going to meet in the choir bell room at 10 o'clock and we'll organize supplies and make some fun decorations. So we're still looking for camping chairs, picnic blankets, pop-up canopies, frisbees. Canyon Lake friends, I cannot express enough how much I appreciate everyone who has brought in supplies or has offered to help. I just cannot tell you how much it means to have you all supporting this wonderful event. I just love you so much. Y'all, thank you so much for joining us in worship. It is, it is always amazing to share this time in this space and this faith with you. So thank you for being here. And as you go forth into the rest of your week, may you go forth truly delighting in God's word. May you go forth truly delighting in, in who Christ is calling you to be. And may you go forth truly delighting in God, knowing that all the while God delights in you too. Friends, may you go in the grace and the peace and the love of Christ this day and all days.
We'll see you next time. I am the world.